We will look at some development of uh, computer architecture and then how to make faster machines by running several, executing several instructions at the same time called uh, pipeline processors. And uh, then we will look more about instructions and uh, how they can be translated from C code to uh, assembler code for power. And lastly, the, um, the term superscalar processors, which is a development of pipeline processors to execute even more instructions simultaneously. So the very first computers, they had really little hardware. And uh, um, the first computer uh, was invented by uh, Conrad Suse. He was uh, a in very interesting person who actually was invited and accepted to come to LTH to give a speech to, um, to, the, uh, to the students here uh, on the occasion of a five year um, anniversary, anniversary of the computer engineering program, the D program. Unfortunately, due to health reasons, he was unable to, to come. He was born 1910 and at the age of 26, he got a patent to build, uh, the, uh, he got a patent for, the compu for a computer. The reason why he invented the computer was that he was bored at doing manual calculations. He started he was uh, educated as a civil engineer and then worked uh, as that and thought it was boring. So he started instead to work uh, with designing airplanes and that resulted in doing manual calculations to a large extent. And he thought that as well was boring. So he dreamt with his friends about doing um, a machine which could do these calculations automatically and uh, built in uh, uh, the living room of his parents um, a, a working computer. So not only he had a patent for it, but he also implemented one. And uh, it was uh, this uh, machine, Z4, was uh, the fastest machine uh, in the world uh, for some time. And it was the first working machine uh, uh, sorry, the first commercial machine which was working at the, at the customer. There was one before, but it didn't work because the customer wanted to, it was not the, it was an American machine. Uh, it, the customer wanted to assemble it uh, itself because of security concerns and it didn't work out so very well. Okay. Uh, what we should notice here is um, this is really an extreme accomplishment to design a computer like that. Nowadays, we use computers to design computers. They didn't have any. No graphical interfaces, obviously. Okay, so uh, uh, an interesting part of uh, th these uh, machines they, is that they had no uh, register file or array of registers they had one register called the accumulator and all operations put the result in this uh, register and it was not until 1956 that a machine from england uh, had a register file and it had eight registers <coughs> code size uh, is always more or less an important uh, problem depending on how much time uh, it takes to transfer an instruction from the memory to the CPU and the size of the programs. And one way to reduce the size is to use the idea from the RPN uh, assignment, namely to use a, a stack and have of operands and have um, the operands implicit in the instruction, namely for, uh, at the top two positions, for instance, in the stack. Since the operands are not explicit in the instructions, the instruction can be smaller. 
Okay, uh, this was done, uh, for instance, at the company Burroughs. Burroughs, uh, they were, um, it was a very innovative company. And one reason for that is that uh, Dijkstra uh, uh, worked as a researcher for them for some time. Okay. Uh, normally, when you buy a new computer, you expect the old programs to work perfectly. And if you copy uh, uh, an executable file from one uh, x86 to another, then you expect it to work. But uh, in the beginning of 1960s and before, when a, a computer company produced a new machine, they were always incompatible with previous generations of their computers. So uh, the software didn't work. And this is really a, a big waste. But it was uh, how it was done. Okay, in 1964, um, the, the first computer archite architecture was introduced. And that means they designed this instruction set architecture and it could be implemented by more or less very expensive uh, machines. Uh, that means the customer could keep the software and when they needed a faster machine they would just buy uh, a faster machine from the same uh, producer and uh, they would uh, be able to reuse all their software. Okay, this uh, machine was called the IBM 360 and it has been extremely uh, important uh, for the development. For instance, uh, that uh, uh, computer memories are byte addressable comes from uh, this machine. Okay, it was uh, the dominating machine. And actually it's still uh, in uh, use in the sense that there are compatible products that uh, uh, IBM sells for uh, the mainframes. It's called um, the Z series, S series, and this, uh, ser uh, the Z is for zero downtime. Downtime. Not all, but uh, many of the applications uh, created during uh, 1960s, can, uh, sorry, 70s, can still uh, run on this machine. 